Hello there, welcome back to another edition of Pimp My Filter and in this video we're taking a look at a brand new filter from Fluval. This is the Fluval 207 which is an upgraded version of the 206. There is various upgrades in this particular model which I'll just touch on as I'm going through where the water flows and the various design features of this particular filter but in order for somebody to explain it properly to you I'll put a link to the Fluval 07 series video in the video description and also in the pinned comment because I can imagine there'd be dozens of people putting videos out basically just regurgitating that same information that Fluval have already put out um, to make themselves look clever and I don't want to try and make myself look clever because I'm not. I'd rather just show you how this thing works, touch on some of the improvements and also show you how to get the most out of this particular filter by doing some slight changes. Okay, so there will be some of the upgrade detail that I miss out of this video. That's why I'm putting the link to Fluval's video. They're not super important points, but they are worth knowing if you're considering buying one of these filters. And on the subject of buying them, I'll put links in the video description to Amazon and eBay where you can buy one of these filters. As you know, if you watch my videos, I am a big fan of the Fluval filters. Well, certainly the external canister filters, not so much the internals, although as far as internals go, they are very good. The canister filters have stood the test of time, they're well made, and as they've gone through the successive generations of upgrades, you know, from the 04, 05, 06, 07, they've maintained the quality and where necessary they have improved the quality. That is in stark contrast to a German manufacturer who I will not mention, who people will know, whose successive generations of filters have got cheaper and cheaper. Well, not cheaper and cheaper. That would be a lie. They've got more and more expensive to buy, but they've been manufactured cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to increase the profits. Fluval have gone the other way. They've gone the right way. They've improved the quality, they've improved the functionality of these things, and they've improved the performance as well. But keep watching and I'll show you how to improve the performance even further. So let's bring the camera in, get the top off, and you can listen to me rub it on for a while. Now Fluval have improved the inny outy bits, they've improved that which is the primer which a lot of people had a problem with it was basically just a little flat disc you often saw these things broken off this is a lot stronger and it's a lot easier to use and you'd be able to hear it that is effective i forget what the percentage of increase suction there is in there that's in that fluval video i'm not going to try and remember it that is an improved feature. Let's get this top off and have a look inside. They did do something with the pump. I think they've increased the efficiency of the pump and the quietness of it. The inlet is pretty much the same. It's got a little flappy piece on which pours water into here. Just spin that round this way because it's easier for me to explain that way. And in here, they have made a pretty important change. The outer foam is now bumpy. And according to Fluval, that gives you 30% more contact surface area. I'm not quite sure how they work that out, but I would have thought it would be more than 30%. I always go with bumpy foams if I can. So that is a good feature. That's a nice coarse pad. This one on the back seems to be similarly coarse. Maybe it's a little bit finer. And that one is just a standard fluval pad that you would normally get in the 206. I'm actually going to replace that one because I'm going to put another bumpy foam in there. And you can go with a coarse foam. I'm going to put a medium foam in there. So you'll see that upgrade in a second. And with regard to the baskets, you can now lift them all out in one go like that 
that's a nice feature so let's take a look at what we get in here that is ex well apart from looking a slightly different with this little rod up that's the bottom tray and that is exactly how it would come in the 206 you've got a bumpy medium grade foam in there nice and thick and then you've got a pretty good quality fine pad on top of that so basically that is all your mechanical filtration and really that is a lot of mechanical filtration so next tray up comes with some ceramic rings which i'm not a fan of this is the one area that i think really lets this filter down it's not supplied with enough media and the media that it is supplied with is not very good quality at all i'll just put a close-up picture on now so you can see what i mean compared to a piece of bio home Now hopefully you saw from that picture, this is basically just made from a ceramic dust. Most of this is sealed. When you crack it open, the little bubbles that look like tunnels are just bubbles. It's not an efficient media and there's not much of it. So that is coming out. Then in the top tray, we've got a little bag of activated carbon. And that's okay. That's in the right place. You always go mechanical, biological, then chemical so effectively that gives us two trays to use for biological media and in there we can get 500 grams or 1.1 pound of biohome ultimate in each tray so between the two trays we'll get a kilo or 2.2 pounds if we went for something smaller like bio gravel we'd get about 700 grams which is about a pound and a half in each one which would give us a bit more filtration but yeah, really the choice is yours you can put any media you want in we're aiming for a full cycle so we're gonna go for the bio home ultimate bio gravel is another good choice because you've got plenty of flow it's not gonna get slowed down much by really packing bio gravel in there that will max it out and if anybody's new to the hobby and they're not familiar with the bio gravel that's it there it's basically a porous gravel which is made from sand so <laughs> that's that might sound really strange to people who don't really know much about filter media but when you make a gravel from sand you end up with a porous gravel which supports a massive amount of bacteria not just on the outside but all the way through it as well so that is well I don't know, probably the best choice if you want to max out the biological filtration in these little canister trays but if you want to maximize the flow through these trays uh, and through the media you really want to go with a bio home ultimate because that does let the most water through most effectively either wouldn't be a bad choice i mean even if you used something like eheim oh the balls from eheim what the hell are they called i never remember them eheim substrat pro that's another decent choice you could use pumice as long as you get a good quality white pumice um that's quite a porous media you could use lava rock if you weren't bothered about reducing the nitrates crush that up put it in anything is better than them because there's not many of them and they're not very good so there you go one kilo of biohome ultimate see that that's going to let the water through a lot easier than the bio gravel bio gravel might reduce the flow by 10 percent or something but ultimately any reduction in a canister filter of any sort of note is going to be governed by the fine pad when that becomes clogged that is what will slow the output that the fine pad so drop them on there drop that in oh we've got the carbon right well might as well put the carbon in yeah it doesn't quite fit in there does it nope so we'll have to take a little bit of this media out if you want to put the carbon in 
I normally wouldn't go with carbon, but we have it, so we might as well use it. That's about right. Yep, that'll do. And I'll send that back to Dale. So if he doesn't want to use the carbon, he can simply top it up with the Biohome Ultimate. Okay, so we've got those coarse foams out of the back of this cartridge. And in there, I'm going to put a medium pad with the bumps facing inward. And what that should hopefully do is create cavities in there to trap a lot of muck. There we go. And because that sticks up, that should encourage the muck to go down there and settle out in here. Maybe. That's a nice tight fit. I'm not sure whether you can see in there, but you know the water should get down there and get held in there before passing through the foam and out. You can go with either though, I mean you can just stick a coarse pad in there, just leave the fluval one in if you want. Go with two coarse pads, I go with coarse and medium, it's going to go through there a lot easier than it's going to go through there because as far as the entry goes you've only got this top bit to allow it to get in there really. Whereas here, obviously it goes down there and you've got it coming through there and then out the bottom, out here. And obviously you've got it coming through here as well, you know. And by leaving it high, we effectively create a barrier along here. Obviously it's not a, a super permanent barrier. It just means that when the inlet gets dropped on here, it more or less seals it off from here and it should stop the water going down here and possibly getting through the trees. They're not really renowned for bypass these filters, but you know, that just stops the possibility of it happening. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's one, two. That's a good fit. And if you think and that sounds quite quiet. That's because that is another upgrade. Big rubber feet. Stop the vibration and reduce the noise. So it's no secret that I was a big fan of the O6 series of Fluval canister filters. They're just a very well made, honest sort of a filter. Um, the O7 series, to be fair, doesn't look much different, but it has, it has addressed some of the minor niggles from the O6 and it's addressed them well which is so important it's it's not trying to do anything flashy you know it's not linked to Wi-Fi or any of this nonsense which people seem to want to do nowadays it's just a good honest well made well laid out efficient well it's efficient now efficient well functioning filter um, I would, you know, I mean, I would recommend the O6 because of these improvements. I would recommend the O7 over the O6, but whichever one you go for, you're going to get a good filter. Fluval brought the O7 video out, which I've linked to in the video description and in the pinned comment. I looked down at some of the comments, and there was a lot of people just saying that the the improvements were simply cosmetic, but they're not. They're not cosmetic at all. Well, well. I suppose partially they are because if something looks different you could say it was a, a cosmetic alteration but the changes they've made have been for a purpose um, watch the Fluval video you'll you'll hear the guys explaining exactly what they've done and also why they've done it as well which is the important thing is there's no point doing something just for the sake of it just to make it look flashy it, it's got to have a purpose you know that's why I've altered the inside a little bit you know by adding that very porous very efficient media you cannot see it so it's certainly not cosmetic improvement or alteration but it is a functional uh, effective alteration and really this one is recommended for tanks up to 200 litres better check that actually it might have changed 
It has changed. <laughs> and they're now recommending this particular model for tanks between 60 to 220 litres, which is 20 to 45 US gallons. Um, really, I tend to size filters based on how much media you can get into them because that is the most important thing. That's what's going to process your ammonia and your nitrite. And in this case, it's also going to process your nitrate because we've got a porous media that can support aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Aerobic for the removal of ammonia and nitrite, anaerobic for the removal of nitrate. You need a certain amount of media for a certain volume of water based on the stock. I'll put the full workings out of that in the video description and in the pinned comment, or you can find it on the Q&A page of the Filter Pro website, which will also be linked in the video description and the pinned comment. But basically, we've managed to get the best part of a kilo of media in here, which is £2.2. £2. That makes this suitable for a normally stocked tropical tank if we wanted to see the full cycle, which is not only the aerobic but the anaerobic side of things of roughly 100 litres, or 26 US gallons. For a heavily stocked tank, that you could halve that. So you basically need twice as much media for a heavily stocked tank to give you that surface area, to give you those anaerobic bacteria working away to reduce all the waste that a heavily stocked tank is going to produce. So basically, normally stocked tank, 100 litres. Heavily stocked tank, 50 litres, which is about 13 US gallons, which doesn't sound like much, but that's for a full cycle. And whilst I'm on about a full cycle, I may as well address something that has been bugging me, because there's a few people on the internet saying that it's impossible to achieve a full cycle in a canister filter because of the high flow. That is nonsense. If you're using ceramic rings, yes. It is impossible in a high flow, highly oxygenated environment because they're simply not porous enough. The water just flies straight through them. The wall of the ceramic ring is very thin. They're not, they basically can't support the anaerobic bacteria unless you use them in a very slow flow. For example, in a nitrate reactor where the water is moving so slowly that the water is totally deoxygenated and really, in that environment, you could use plastic balls, any sort of plastic media, ceramic rings. If it's in a, <laughs> if it's in a deoxygenated environment, really the only sort of bacteria that are going to do well in it are the anaerobic bacteria. With the biohome, it's got so many tunnels and it's so accessible for the water that you get little pockets of anaerobic bacteria even in a high flow. The ability to support anaerobic bacteria is down to the media, not really the flow, as I've just explained there. Obviously, low flow, very low flow, deoxygenated environment, yes, any media will support anaerobic bacteria. And really, the structure of biohome can kind of be likened to a big house. You've got all the windows shut, winds whistling past, you open two small windows on one side of the house. The wind can still get in the house, but it slows right down by the time it reaches the end of the first room. If you step back, say you've got a candle lit, the candle is hardly going to move. There's going to be no wind there. If you step further and further back into the house or go into a different room up the stairs, you're never going to feel that wind. That's the equivalent of the water flying past the media, saying, hey, up there's a hole going into the hole and then thinking, oh, I've got nowhere to go, I'll slow right down. You know, further down that tunnel, it's pretty much all anaerobic activity. I'm not sure if I've made that very clear with that uh, house analogy there, but basically it doesn't really matter how fast the water is moving past the entrance. Actually, I'll give you another one, a cave. If you've ever been into a cave or into an old mine, you could have a raging hurricane outside at the entrance of that cave or that tunnel or that mine or whatever, you're still going to feel the wind. You step back further into that long tunnel and you're going to get less and less and less and less wind. That's basically like the water flying over the outlet of one of those tunnels in the biohome. It's going to find the easiest route. It's not going to 
go into the tunnel, turn around and then come back out again, it's going to move through there exceptionally slowly. That's all the biohome does, it slows the flow down in the media. That's what makes it special. So if anybody tells you that you can't achieve a full cycle, i.e. you can't support anaerobic bacteria in a canister filter or a shower filter, anything where the water is highly oxygenated and moving pretty fast, you can tell them that they are talking bollocks. All you need is enough suitable media to make that full cycle happen, to provide all of that surface area, both external and internal, for aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. It's basically just replicating nature. It's a really simple process, um, <laughs> which is why I, it really it's a head scratcher how some people kind of get their heads around that simple concept. It's it's really simple, you know. I still get messages from people and I see comments saying, oh, I put Biohome Ultimate in my FX6 or my Fluval, whatever, in my Malawi tank, 500 litre tank, I bought a kilo and it did absolutely nothing. Well, as far as the nitrate reduction goes, it is going to do absolutely nothing if you haven't got enough of it. It's as simple as that. I mean, even going to a chemical sort of analogy, if you've got a problem with your fish and say you've got white spot or something and your tank requires you to add 20 drops per day and you add three, your fish are not going to get any better, you know? You've got to use the right amount of everything. Imagine if you were travelling a thousand miles in a car, that gas tank was going to hold a thousand miles worth of fuel and you put five dollars worth of fuel in it. You're not going to get far, you know? <laughs> I'm rambling now. And that's really gone off the subject of this very, very good filter. As I said before, all the relevant links to information on this filter and also where you can buy it are in the video description and also in the pinned comment. If you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share it wherever you want. I'm sure there's a lot of people are looking into buying one of these. They are very, very good. They basically just made a good thing better. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'll just edit that out. <laughs> I'm terrible. Like I honestly, I'm the worst man. I can imagine what I'll be doing. <laughs>